Welcome back to The Art of Zeus, a series on intermediate and advanced concepts of the Arma 3 Zeus game mode. In this episode, we'll be focusing on arsenal and loadouts and their effect on the mission. Arsenal. It defies belief how much drama and debate surrounds this tool. For those lucky few who do not know what arsenal is, I'll give you a quick overview. Arsenal is a module which can be placed over any object, a chair, vehicle, ammo box, soldier, anything, turning that object into a virtual ammo box to which any player can load any previously saved loadout. Pretty useful tool, right? Wrong. Dead wrong. Arsenal is dangerous. In fact, I would go as far as to say its very existence as a Zeus module is harmful to the game mode, and not in a small way. It's also harmful to your mission regardless of what kind of mission it is. Allow me to explain. When you give players arsenal, each player will use it to create their loadout. There's a lot of equipment in Arma 3, and now every player is running around with a unique permutation of that s set of equipment, and nobody knows how to identify them from enemy soldiers. In fact, arsenal allows soldiers to equip clothes from the opposing faction, increasing the confusion. On top of that, players now have no easy way to respawn with that equipment if they die. Who do you think they're going to beg to for another arsenal once that happens? You, the Game Master. Even if you dismiss the clown-like outfits and the increased chance of team killing, which are reason enough to not use arsenal, there are more dire and subtle problems with arsenal. Trolling and balance. How can arsenal enable trolling? Mortar tubes. A quick answer, players can load saved loadouts that have a bipod and a tube, assemble them, and fire indiscriminately at the objective the instant they know about it. Or worse, they can point it at teammates and allied vehicles and waste everybody's time. Even if you exclude mortars, arsenals can create massive balance problems, and they always do. When you make a mission, you have a pool of players, ranging from 1 to 16 in a public server on single team. You then have a pool of enemies, which can range from zero and in, into the hundreds. As a GM, your job is to create an engaging mission experience that pits the combined skill of the pool of players against the number and skill level of the opposing AI. This is commonly known as balance. In a good mission, the balance should clearly be tipped in the favor of the players, but not so far that the AI pose no real threat to the players. This is done by lowering the skill of the AI, but making them more numerous so that they still pose a danger to anybody who is lazy or overly aggressive. More intense moments of missions are generally created by temporarily tipping this scale towards the AI. When players pick loadouts from an arsenal, they always give themselves the best equipment. Thermal optics, MMGs, LRRs, missile, anti-tank, anti-air, you name it, they have it. Three skilled players with arsenal loadouts can wipe out a platoon comprised of the best players in the world. When pitted against AI, a mission that would have been fair for players who have red dot sights and iron sights is thrown completely off balance in favor of the players when you introduce MMGs and long range rifles or thermals. A mission that stays this way isn't going to be fun, so the only way to compensate is to either create more AI or increase their skill. Herein lies the trap. A GM that creates more AI or increases their skill, they are increasing the skill pool of the AI side of the balance equation. The force multipliers on the player side, in terms of equipment, keeps the equation in check. But this is not part of their skill, so it's only temporary. This one-time use equipment, once they die, they're not getting it back. The GM has effectively created a balance trap without even realizing it. Moreover, by letting everybody be everything, nobody is special. Nobody has to rely on teammates for revives. Nobody has to rely on teammates for ammo. Nobody has to rely on teammates for anti-tank or suppression. This cheapens teamwork and leads down a dark path for the mission and the server. As a GM, using Arsenal is lazy. If you can't spend the time and effort to create a handful of thematic classes for your mission, how can you demand that players put forward the effort to take your mission seriously? Bottom line, don't use Arsenal. Ever. If you want to give players equipment, give it with purpose. Scarcity will make them cherish it more. Moving on to loadouts. Assign loadouts with purpose. 
Don't assign AT if there won't be a need for it, and make sure there is AT if there will be a need for it. Too much choice is a bad thing. Only assign six or seven loadouts in a mission unless there's a specific need for more, one of which should always be a medic. When making custom loadouts, avoid making classes overly self-sufficient. Running out of ammo can be an enjoyable experience if a squad has an ammo bearer that can resupply a desirable weapon. High power optics should be avoided for the same reason that arsenal should be. If you want to use them, place them as a single instance rather than bundling them with a loadout that can produce infinitely many. Always test your loadouts before bringing them into a session. Nothing is worse than players wondering why their loadout has ammo for the wrong weapon and 12 chemlites. When naming loadouts, try and stick to a naming standard that effectively describes what's in each loadout, since you'll need to identify them only by name when assigning them to players. Above all, use common sense when making and assigning loadouts. It's not rocket science, and you can have a lot of fun with it. I'm not going to put out a bunch of rules on making loadouts, because from what I've seen, there's no real wrong way to do it. The only thing I will say is don't give players equipment that does not match their team.